Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. The Savachi syndrome, I'm telling you, I'm like, well, holy shit, that was crazy. I finally decided to show up. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> welcome to our first episode of the 2018 season here for the Moto Aftermath show. Me and Justin are back. We are joined by Matt over here. As you know, I'm his drunk mustache guy. Drunk mustache Bud. guy from Red Bud. If you haven't seen it, go back, look the video up. I'm just kidding. I'll link it down below for you guys. Um, so anyway, so this year we are sponsored by TLR Coatings, which just happens to be my powder coating company. Basically, no one wanted to give us any money tickets no, or even a t-shirt so <laughs> fuck everybody we're doing this ourselves this year so exactly. anyway again um so yeah so uh make sure check us out on facebook um we do have the blog going on pretty much weekly right now justin's gonna start writing that when supercross season starts mm -hmm. yes hopefully not one thing off my Fuck off, Matt. <laughs> um, so make sure to follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Travis Ridenauer. Uh I do post a lot of moto pics and stuff on there. I mean, it's a it's a personal Instagram page, so whatever. But you guys can follow us on there. Uh, also, we do have T-shirts. Uh, Teespring.com forward slash Moto Aftermath Show shirt one. I think is what it. There will be a link in the description below. I don't remember all of it. Uh, it's on there. I think it's like twenty three, twenty four bucks plus shipping which is like five or six dollars um helps us out we get a little cut of that also you go to patreon i'll link that down below i can't remember all these websites donate 10 it. cents donate 10 you cents. can donate anything i think the one i have on there right now is like two dollars if you donate two dollars what i decided i'm going to do with that is start throwing everybody who donates the minimum amount your name as a special thanks in the credits at the end of the video um and then i'll come up with some different uh what are you laughing at <laughs> He saw boobs. <laughs> you know. Do, you, do we need to turn the TV off? Is it? I told you to turn the TV off. <laughs> I keep man. catching myself swinging Jesus over. Jesus God. Anyway. All right. Um. Anyway. Uh. So I'll come up with some more uh, Patreon things to do. We'll try to do probably a special design T-shirt or something at some point. Also, there's Amazon links down below. If you click those, go on there, buy something. Helps us out. Also. Um. Yeah. So that's basically it for the intro here, Matt. Why don't you give us a quick two minute, I'm um, not even two minute, two second blurb on yourself and your moto experience. Well, Matt Wyman, uh, 27, raced uh, Super Series 3 in Michigan. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Top seven contender most years. Um, now he's part of the dad bod squad and dad bod squad. twice a year, so great. Yeah. How many years have you been in the moto scene? Been in the moto scene 16 years now. Okay. First great. professional race didn't go that great. No. Why don't you tell us about that real <laughs> yeah, Why don't you tell us about that for a little bit? Let's hear about your first professional race. Well, um, truck broke down the night before <laughs> at 3 a.m., so I had to call somebody at 6 a.m. to come and pick me up with the bike. <laughs> Got there. Practice. Didn't go so hot, but... Riders meeting was sweet. Sat next to Trey Kennard. This was at the Red Bud Bash. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, went out and practice. Number plate hit fell a off. solid three laps and uh, shattered the ankle. Number plate fall off second lap. All right, great. Well, it's great to have you with us, buddy. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Uh, I basically just brought him in to rile this guy up even more so that the hate mail can continue to flow in. Whatever, dude. But we're not here to talk about us. We're no. here to talk about Supercross. Fuck 2018. Yeah. So let's start off. Um, let's start with the outliers, okay? Chad Reed, go. Well, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, he's going to be riding a Boost Mobile Husky. No factory support this time, unlike the first time he tried this, and it's not even Team 2 2. It's just Chad Reed and a fun mover. Or It's not really fun. It's not really a fun move. It's just a thing. Um, I heard there isn't even a fun mover yet, so no, we I don't really know. I think it might be a box van, possibly. Awesome. Uh, Gosser. I Mike, like it. Mike Goose Gossler will be his mechanic again. Uh, Dan Truman running that Get Programmer. 
Uh, I think it's going to be a disaster. I think the fact that he has not really done any testing of any sort since May, the last round uh, in Vegas of this past year, he won't even be cleared to ride till the first week of Anaheim. Uh, like I told you before he came on the show, I'd be surprised if he even makes the main come A1. And I think that this is the last year we'll be seeing Chad Reed. Oh, 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 oh it's already oh, starting. It's starting. Oh, it's oh, already starting. Oh, starting. No, man. Yes, no, come on. On. Go ahead. No, come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Rebuttal. Um, Rebuttal this. I know you're new to the show, Chad, so I'll lead you through Chad, this. Rebuttal he's a it. beast. Um, obviously, he hasn't been testing because he has a broken ankle. Mm -hmm. um, you know all about that, don't you? Chad, <laughs> you do. <laughs> Once, uh, once he gets back on his feet, maybe a few uh, rough rounds, but I'll say he's beaten Pike by the end of round oh four. Oh my god, here we go. Here we Trolling go. Trolling starts already. All right. Trolling. Highest finish he gets this year. Chad Reed? Yep. In a main. In a main. Seventh. Really? I say he misses three mains this year. That's lower than I honestly thought. I thought you were going to put him up in the top five. I was going to be like, no effing way. I just, dude, he's, he's, uh, it's the back end of his career, man. Like, I have all the respect in the world for Chad. I mean, people who watch the show know me and Travis. We do troll Chad a little bit, and we've said some things about him. But he still is one of the greatest Supercross riders of all time. But he's, what, 35 now? He's he's literally doing, he has no factory support. Like, he doesn't even have an engine package set up for this time. We don't know what suspension he's running. I mean, Ends at race tech. Oh, it is race tech. I don't know. Dude, th Chad has heart. Is he really he, racing race he tech? He has exactly. heart. Okay, so this is basically like, he'll be on the level of like what a Nick Schmidt just with more money. Like, he has no. No. He no. has no help. Who's no. no. I just don't see it, man. I don't Look see it. Look at him. Look at his accomplishments. Can you. Oh, do you think this Come is his, Do you think this is his last year, though? Do you think he's done after this year? I think he should have retired yeah, after last year. Yeah, I think year. so, just because, you know. Getting old. I just don't. I just don't have faith in him, man. Because <laughs> at least the first time he did this, he had a plan. This time, he's. I think he's just doing it to do it. Like he's just doing it because he can't accept not riding anymore. Yeah, that's exactly why he's doing it. Because he said before he'd never do another team with the semi and all that shit. Cost way too much money and wasn't worth it. So but I think that's where he might accelerate because he doesn't have all the stresses mm -hmm. and the obligations and the liabilities. He okay, just, A1 it's, finish it's him. A1 finish though with a week of ride time. What does he do? I don't. I say he doesn't make the main. I'm with you. You don't Go think he ahead. makes the main? Nope. Okay. What do you oh, think? Oh no, I think he'll make the main. But what do you think he does though? Um, honestly, probably like fifteenth. Okay. Let's say. <laughs> say he made. Yeah, I can't. He argue. made. It. He got eighth. Okay. That. Okay. He got eighth. They brought this up on the. Th he got eighth last year with testing time on a factory team. I just think. Um, oh. I don't think the. Bad. He doesn't. Have Fifteen. I wouldn't. I wouldn't argue with it. But I'm doubtful. He goes to the LCQ if he does make the main. I think he... he's going to be higher than 15th for a few laps. But I think he's going to get tired because he doesn't have any train time. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, next outlier. <laughs> <laughs> James Stewart. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, Mookie. Fuck you. Mookie. <laughs> Mookie. We all know he ain't coming back. Anyway, Mookie, you get to go first on this one. Thoughts? He's on a Cowie. He's on. But it doesn't say your, Kawasaki. He's on your bike, buddy. But, he, but it doesn't say Kawasaki. But it doesn't say Kawasaki. Um, because F Kawasaki, they're not helping him anyway. I know, right? Is what I've heard. It's going to be silver. <laughs> so, Mookie, that's a hard one. I think he'll do good this year. I think uh, from the videos he's posted, he has a lot of speed. He looks smooth. He's going out in a sprinter van. Do Dean Wilson think, route. Do you think he gets a ride? A fill in, a fill -in ride. ride. If somebody gets hurt. Maybe, but. I think the problem is, is he doesn't want to race. He moto. wants too much. He wants too much money is one of his big issues. If he would race moto mm -hmm. outdoors, yep. I think um, he could have got a ride. Yep. You pretty, think he finishes pretty easily? You think he finishes the whole series? Do you think he roughs it out if he doesn't get a ride and finishes the whole series? I think it depends on how well he's doing. I don't think he's. I don't think he said he's going to do the whole series. Yeah, like what the same. Thing I don't like, know that Chad said he's going to do the whole series. To be Chad, right. I don't think is doing the whole series. So I don't know that Mookie's going to do the whole series either. But Mookie's openly said that he's going in the van because last year when he did the whole like team ish thing, yeah, was, he he didn't like it because he was locked in. No one would call him. So he's he, doing the van specifically to get the call for the filling ride. And he apparently didn't have a good bike and this and that, but he had a factory engine and. The, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's gonna be. I don't think it's gonna be as successful as the Dean Wilson route because I don't think that Mookie has the heart in it anymore. And everybody who's seen Mookie come up from the amateur ranks. We definitely saw it a lot because he used to race against Mookie in the amateur stuff. Well, he was doing it at the talent, but he 
like he liked fishing like more than he liked riding half the time. Maybe and he I, should be a pro fisherman. He actually could have been. He that should be. been pretty cool. Yeah, it would have been. Just wouldn't have got as much money. Um, maybe. maybe. I don't know. I think I think that he I think he does the Mookie thing, and he has a couple flashes of brilliance in some heat races. He won one last year or this past year. But man, I think that when the tough get when it starts getting really tough, and he if he has like mains where he finishes 18th, 19th, I think that he um, I think he pulls out. I don't think his heart's in it. I mean, dude, there's been no videos, and I know that we talk about this a lot. Like, hey, there's a certain amount of stuff you should put out for people to know on social media. But that's a Stewart thing, man. Stewart's have never but been. He's, but he's really not like James, though. He's had a couple of videos it, lately. But it's from, yeah, but from, like, the ride day and before that. He's not like James, though. Like, he was big into the social media thing this past year. Like, he was updating, like, every two days, and, hey, like, hey, I'm doing this, and, hey, I'm that. All these, like, uh, you know, uh, inspirational shit. I just I think when the tough starts to get really bad, I don't think that he's gonna stick it out as much as I hate to say that. i I don't know, man. I think uh, right now a lot of people haven't been putting videos online because they wanna. Kenny you know, has. This Kenny has. Adam Cicerello. <laughs> Kenny yeah. and AC, buddy. I think Malcolm's best finish in a main is seventh. Other than that, I think that he struggles most of the year because I think that that bike is not gonna be good at all. Like I think it's gonna be worse than Chad Husky. Like you're, dude, you're talking about a bike that's gonna maybe have an exhaust yeah. system and a like a set of forks and a shock. Yeah, yeah, you're probably not right. So, all right, let's move into our last outlier, though. <laughs> not right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> let's, let's, let's move into our last outlier, though. Uh, Jimmy you, Martin, you can start off with this one. This is your guy. Oh God. Well, Travis fucking hates everybody that me and Matt like. Well, true. Whoa, whoa. Hate is a strong word. Dislike. Highly doubtful of skill set is where I would put this Whoa! in. Whoa! Two out of two outdoor championships. Two but outdoor championships. Let's, let's talk about it for a second, okay? So we all saw what he did in Daytona last year, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. But how do you judge that against being on a real Supercross track? You can't. Completely different setup. You can't. So, completely different setup, but I think he is fit for a 450 more than he's fit for a 250. Man, it makes up his touch. You two idiots say that about every single dude that can't ride a 250. Well, and he's a 450 guy. No, he, well, he's Jay a 450 guy. J Mark oh. can ride a 250F, but because of his, his stature, but, he has technique deficiencies that a 450 can help. But I don't think he's a Supercross guy. I think the best move for him would be to find a team that signs him for outdoors only, whether he's riding 250 or 450. That's what I think the move should be. There's enough guys that only want to race Supercross. There's plenty of them. Well, I mean, plenty he, of them. There's no money in the outdoor compared to Supercross, though. There's got to be some money. Fuck, their bonuses are bigger for outdoors, from what I've heard, than what they are for Supercross. I if mean, they win the title. He has got second in the points before on Supercross and 250 class, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Wow, how many mains has he not made? Do you want to keep... Dude, it was two! Let's not get in on that. <laughs> It was two. Just saying. Jesus. I don't know exactly how he's going to do. I know he's got huge deficiencies in Supercross compared to outdoors. I know that where Daytona isn't as much of an old school Daytona as it used to be, it still is completely different than any other Supercross track you're going to find out there. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know, but I have high doubts that he's going to do anything. A2 Monster Cup first eight lap main. He does good. He'll do good. I He'll think he that. ragdolls an A one, and we don't see him again until the East Coast. I don't believe that. I don't think that. I don't think he ragdoll. I don't. I don't expect a lot out of him these three rounds because he still is a two fifty guy. He still contract contracted through Geico because this is going to be a HRC thing. He's going to be under the Geico tent, but he's going to be riding an HRC factory bike. They're not the ones paying him. It's kind of like the Christian Craig thing there was for a while, where the last couple rounds he still. Has to go ride 250 East. I think that if he gets in a situation where it starts to creep in mentally, that he's struggling, he'll back it down. But I think those abbreviated mains where if he can get a start, he's a sprinter. Plain and simple. In Supercross, he is a sprinter because he knows he can't put it together for a whole entire main. It would not shock me if he gets top five in that first abbreviated main. Other than that, I think he's just going to fall into place like everybody else. Maybe 12th, 13th place. Well, I'm going to be there, so I'll call I'm you after practice and tell you how shitty he's doing. But He's not going to do shitty. You're going to Anaheim? He'll be an A2. Two. A2. Oh, A2 in Phoenix, I'll be there. Okay, so. A1 right now. So, why are you Dude, you need to go. It's freaking awesome. Like, yeah, dude, it was can great. I go with you? It was great. Yeah, can we go with you? Maybe. <laughs> it, was great. it was great last year seeing Kenny win by 25 seconds. Yeah, it was uh, awesome. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. How do you think so, he does? Okay, how do you think he does then? For the mark? Yeah, for the mains. You said top 10, but like, got A1 finish. I think, like, just depends. He gets a good start, top 5 start. Let's say fades back to ninth, tenth. 
I think if he starts in ninth or tenth, eh. trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you see what happens from there. Do you think he hits the deck? But honestly, though, if he stays on two wheels, what do you think he gets? I think tenth to fifteenth is with tenth being very optimistic because there's a ton of bad dudes we're about to go through here. Oh, for sure. That I mm -hmm. put ahead of him, especially at A1, who are going after title. Well, he's going to beat Mookie and Reed. <laughs> so he's 20th out of 22. Woo! If Reed even makes the main. He's not going to. So, anywho, uh, <laughs> any other thoughts on the outliers before we move on here? Not really. No. No. Okay. No. Let's move on then. All right. Okay, we're good. You Sorry, you better out there than I always said. Um, anyway, okay, let's move on. First team we're going to talk about, we're starting kind of at the bottom here. Well, it, teams that don't get as talked about as much. Yes. Because the second one, there is a bad dude on that team. Yes. But. Um, so, MCR, Moto Concepts Racing here. Uh, who do you guys want to talk about first? We're going to talk, talk about, about Freeze? Freeze or Brady? talk about Freeze? Freeze. Because I think all three of us hate him. Well, he could make things interesting this year. Oh, Jesus. That's not my favorite. <laughs> no. So, definitely love when him and Pike get into it a little bit. I, mean, Pike I beats told him ass. earlier before he got out here, I was like, I really hope they get together and Pike beats his ass in A1 again. <laughs> well, I really hope Freezy takes Pike out again. So Pike can beat his ass. <laughs> yeah, so then. Pike can beat his ass. Pike beat his ass like again. stupid. Beat him up. I love um, to see Pike get a little cry in. He didn't cry, bitch. Well, how do you guys how do you guys think Freeze is gonna do in these three these three main formats here? These Piss Monster Cup everybody formats. the fuck off. Especially the first one if he gets a start. I think he'll do pretty well. And Unfortunately that, he rides a super wide bike and he's hard to pass, so the yeah, short they, mains they got about he can put it in. Six foot wide lanes and he runs about five and a half feet. <laughs> so yeah. That was my thought on that too, and obviously a lot of people have thought about it. Um because I've heard several people talk about it through Pulp and everything, too. Uh, those first mains are only eight minutes long. He gets a start. I mean, he can make that bike as wide as that track because that's the way he rides. But can he, though, and I know that people have kind of uh, over-exaggerated a little bit, but, like, does anybody really believe that, like, say, like, Tomac or Kenny or I don't, Mar I don't he think he, I don't think he can win He can't win. Can he podium? No. Can, can he, he podium? podium? Yeah. I think, so. he can, I think he can put enough. I think he, I think if he yanks a whole shot, which everyone knows he's capable of yanking a whole shot, I think he can put his bike wide enough to keep guys in the back. Especially if you get like, say, Marv, Eli, and Kenny all get bad starts and mm -hmm. are coming through the field. I mean, that's a big if. Though. Freeze though is for whatever reason. I know it's kind of an old cliche saying, but like riding with eyes in the back of your head. But he is for whatever reason. He can just feel. And I don't know if it's just a sensation thing. He f can feel where guys are at, where the revs of their bike and the, where the ground movement and stuff. He is really good about anticipating what guys are going to do. Kind of like what Coop was on the 250. But I don't think he can even podium. I think he can get top five at best. Because there will become a time where if, okay, say that those guys stack up, but you have somebody like JG behind him and he knows JG can get a win. Dude, you know JG will send his ass over the fucking berm anytime he gets a chance. Agreed. Yep. So I say if he gets a start in those abbreviated mains, I think his best finish is fifth. Which for Vince Freeze is phenomenal. Alright, so what about what about Jake Weimer? What do we think he's going to do this year? He's, he's been hurt. He's an anomaly to me. Jake. He's an anomaly to me. Why I say that? Because he's I, an anomaly because he got 10th in the points. No, 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 no. He is... Because... Hold he, on. Remember that he got 10th in the points two years ago? Wait until took, we start talking about Barsha. You took one of my points away. Like, I was going to get at that. <laughs> he's an anomaly to me because he can still get top 10 in the points. He's been 10th in the points two out of the last three years. He still gets rides. But I almost feel like he's the forgotten man when we do when everybody does these pre-shows because you get down to the second, third, last guy, and you're like, oh, Jake Weimer can still ride. It's because he's not flashy, and he hasn't really had any amazing rides since the Cowie days, but he can still get top 10. So I don't, I don't know where I stand with Jake because he can still go get top 10s every main, but it's like you go out and watch the races and shit, and you're like, oh, where the fuck's Jake Weimer at? Mm -hmm. But he still has the speed. He's smooth as fuck. But you never know what you're going to get with Jake. 8th yep. to 16th is what you're going to get with him. Well, nine, maybe nine, that ten bike ten will uh, it is definitely change better. it up. You know? It's definitely better maybe. than the bike he was riding last year. Now, what about Justin Brayton? He's coming off another Oz X. I'm a Brayton guy. I am too. Oz Supercross. I'm a Brayton guy. Championship. Whoop speed for days. And he's actually back in the States training. And he actually had a track in. I just listened to a thing with him on Pulp the other day about he actually has been 
training in Australia. He wasn't just sitting on the beach anymore. Although so. I'm bummed because his mechanic got shafted for some shitty fucking reason. And Team Honda didn't, Motor Concepts didn't tell him. So that's going to be like mentally. But he is one of those guys, though, that I believe that if he gets a start in the abbreviated mains, can win. Yes. Because his starts are on point and his whoop speed is good enough where I would say that it's probably next to Eli and Kenny, the fastest guy in the whoops of anybody. If he gets a start and those guys bunch... Now, this is all talking about if these guys bunch up. Like, if he's out there with a JG and a Freeze and a Pike and all that and stuff, and those guys are behind him, Brayton's savvy enough where he can go win a main. Now, if other than that, like regular 20, the 20-minute 20 mains, I think he's a top 10 guy. I do. I truly believe he's top 10. Oh, I agree. Maybe top 7. Yeah. I mean, dude, how many times have we seen him be top 5 when nobody expected it? Well, the nice thing about him is is he only wants to be a Supercross guy, and he has finagled this to where he's only a Supercross guy now. And it's great because people forget that like he's like 33 now. Yeah, yeah. I think the outdoor beats their bodies up when they get to that age. Yeah, you know? well, because he literally goes to Australia with his family for mm -hmm. the entire fall and just rides and hangs out, and then comes back here, and he's right now living in like Santa Barbara or something like that with one of the mechanics and rides, and then he does Supercross, and so by May, he's done. Living the dream. Living and he's the making dream. and he's making good money. <laughs> and he's making great yeah, money. He's making good money and apparently he great party, money. parties pretty hard too. Yeah. So anything else on MCR before we move on from either of you? No, I just uh, expect big things out of Brayton. I think he's gonna do well. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, so the next team then we'll go to BTO Sports here and we'll start with the lesser known and I know you don't know hardly anything about him so I'll go over to you. He's a monkey fucking a football. The giraffe child. The baby giraffe. Baby giraffe. Benny Bloss. Like 6'12". 6'12", 175 pounds. Looks like he's anorexic. Yeah, it's weird. Um, I'm just kidding. He doesn't look that bad. But how do we think he does? Because we didn't really get to see him last year because he ragdolled himself. First practice. This is a first. His first. Of 250s. And this is his first season in 450 Supercross. He rides 450 outdoors. Uh, I think Which it's, is funny because he never rode 250 Supercross. No. He rode one practice. <laughs> yeah. Like I think he's going to struggle a little bit, to be honest with you. I think it's the learning curve going from, well, never even really racing 250s and then jumping straight in with the big boys. He's on a good bike. We know he's on a good bike. Um, but he's but the thing is though, he, outdoors he's been racing 450, so he's raced speed wise. But we know that guys. Supercross is a different. It's different, animal. yes. But at least it's not like completely like going from no. amateurs to pro. Be like, I think that there where there's times where there's gnarly rhythms that he's got to pick it up soon. I think that that's where you're going to see his rook. I want to say rookie loosely. His rookie side of things kind of creep in, where being able to just hit the rhythm smooth lap after lap and pushing those transitions. I think that's where he's going to struggle. I think that he's a he's a talented kid. We all see what he does outdoors. Mm -hmm. He's top five guy outdoors when he wants to be. But man, the field is so stacked that it'd be really hard for me to see him even being a top ten guy. So I guess my question is: Is he training with Baggett? I don't think he is. No, I don't know where he's training. I haven't heard anything. Uh, last I seen anybody's talked about. Last I seen a year ago, he was at the Nest. Okay. But I don't know if he's there anymore. I mean, he's I remember, at the Nest or is he in? Uh, he, he was at Raynard's place. He was at Raynard's place, and then an Oklahoma. But then he, yeah, the Oklahoma, <laughs> oh. Bogle, and Canard. Then he moved away though, because he moved to Florida for a while. Oh, okay. I, uh, but I don't know what he's doing now. I don't know. No, I mean, he's not training with Baggett. Though, that's a good sure. question though. But I don't. Yeah, if he's training him. with Baggett, I mean. Yeah, I no, I know what you're Baggett's getting. Baggett's on a tear. Right? I know what you're getting at. No, I don't think he is though. So. I, I think he's kind of. I think he's back and forth between Florida and going back to Raynard's place. Hmm. I don't think he really has any guidance, though, because I don't think Kennard's there much as he used to be, and Bogle's in Carolina, so it's like he's kind of just doing his own thing. Hmm. Yeah, maybe get a little more one-on-one -on -one time with the Rangers, though. That'll definitely help him. I mean, look, Boss has got skills for days. He's a good rider, and his yeah. speed, because as big as he is, is gnarly, but... Best finish you think he's going to get this year? In Supercross. Ninth. All right, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. I mean, dude, we're just so stacked. Oh, yeah, I mean, like I said, we've still got a ton of bad dudes we got to go over. And but... he's not, in my opinion, better than Brayton and Weimer. No. Freeze, yes. Brayton and Weimer, no. So that's already two dudes. Yeah. So anyway, the other the other half. That's I'll uh, let you go. Yeah, there. That's, your, that's kind of your guy from the Cowie days. Uh, Blake Baggett. What do you? I mean, let's let's hear some thoughts, some concerns. So one thing I like is that you haven't seen much of him on no. any social medias. Mm -hmm. So I think he's uh, keeping all his eggs in his basket, mm -hmm. not letting anybody know what's going on with him. So I think that'll be really cool to see. Kind of not seeing him all season, mm -hmm. then just bam, Anaheim won. Mm -hmm. I think um, he's going to be the big, big outlier here mm -hmm. this season. It's either going to go really well or, or really, really shitty. <laughs> but I think um, I think he has a lot of potential to win 
Mm -hmm. Well, we saw parts of it last year because yeah. we saw him in a lot of races, especially once we got mid-season on. I remember specifically being at Indy and Detroit and watching him come through the pack and ride well. He ain't scared either. No. He ain't scared of the big dogs. He's not. <laughs> we'll get... My yeah. dad ain't famous, but... My dad ain't famous, you know, this and that, and the whole Tomac jab. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I think he's going to do well. And I think um, he's definitely going to be a top five dude week in and week out. Yeah. But until I actually see him go speed for speed with the real the three the big three that we're going to talk get to, I'm not going to fully put in. The, I'm not putting him as a title contender for he's, out or for indoors. He's a title contender. See, I just I believe he's a title contender. Yeah, I do too. Not for indoors, no. Man, way. you. You saw how he became one with the bike outdoors. He looked really he, well. He, he did. And I, and once we get to the outdoors, that's going to be a completely different story from my perspective on him. But, but, but I think he actually trusts his bike, trusts mm -hmm. the team, trusts He's the bigger mechanic. now, too. He's bigger and now. He's been stronger. He's a lot more fit. His um, wrist has been fairly well what was the last one? thumb finger yeah, thumb. Thumb. Yeah. the thumb so, so hopefully the thumb you know uh, is all healed up and good and i think he's going to be i think he's a title contender sure. i think he's a title contender as much as i don't like Baggett, i think that he's just he's come on so strong his confidence is there you know we know all the bullshit that he was talking after getting his first 450 win at thunder valley but you've seen signs of why he got dubbed El Chupacabra in the 250 days, where if he was in the top 10, 20 minutes to go, he was going to the front, and he was probably going to win. Now, yes, he had the thumb injury, and then, you know, we all know what happened in the 450s for outdoors, but he's finally becoming the guy that we all expected him to be coming off 250s, except now his super supercross skills are so much further along than when he first got in there. And I think as much as I'm not a KTM guy, it is that bike. It is having the factory help. He does get help from Ian Harrison and Roger and all those guys, not to the extent of the Red Bull team, but uh, I think he's a title contender. I don't think it's just top fives. I'll go along and say it. I think he gets multiple wins this year. I agree. And not just the Monster Cup format. I think from the videos that I've seen, and I know that, that, that just that one video I sent to you guys, he, was fa he looked faster than Marv and Brock did. Brock did, plain and simple. I give him maybe a win. I don't give him multiples. I think he gets Period. multiple wins. I don't like saying it because I'm not a bag of guy, but, man, did, confidence everybody knows. Riding a dirt bike, it's 80% metal. And his confidence is way high right now. I'm just putting down a check mark every time you say somebody's going to get multiple wins. I want to see when we get to the end of the show how many check marks I got okay. <laughs> from you for how many dudes are going to have multiple I'll wins. I'll say it. Bag it. I'll stand by it. Bag it gets multiple wins. Did you want me to put your name down on this too for multiple wins? Because he'll bring it back up at some time. Because at the end of the I mean, show, if, you, if, you're right, if we're right, it makes us look good. I'm going to say, if you're right, it makes you look good. If not, then I make a t-shirt about it. I mean, I made a little stupid on the Sabachi thing after he got multiple wins. Yeah. I mean, I, I think... Um, I'm giving him two, maybe three. All right, we'll and, put you down for a little check mark over here. And I'll stick it wins. out, even if it's going wrong at the beginning of the season. I say that when, even if he doesn't have wins come East Coast, when we get back to the tacky dirt, when we get towards that Florida dirt, he gets wins. And I would be go so far as to say that he might even win Daytona. Okay. No, and dude, it's <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. You know, haven't we talked about? Hey, don't let don't let your emotions get the best of you. Bag it to me right now. This isn't an emotional thing. This is how many other okay, bad how, dudes are going to be. How ahead much of have here? I been critical of Bag it though? I have never no, said that I'm a bag no, guy. No, I think and, he's and, on such and a I'm rise. I'm not saying that he's shitty by any stretch mm -hmm. of the imagination. I'm just saying, comparative wise to the other bad dudes we're about to talk about mm -hmm. here in the next 20 minutes. Yep. I don't think he puts it on the top of the box more than once this season. I get it. Now, I mean, maybe that one wins Daytona. Mm -hmm. Maybe he comes out in Daytona. I have seen the track layout. I don't yep, know if you guys have, have seen it. It's, Daytona, it's yeah, not as many Daytona, fucking switchbacks well, like it was, but... I think Kenny's going to win Daytona. I, th I think too. he's been training in Florida. We can stop the show right now. Oh, just God, I just had a heart attack. Can we just all put right, that down? All right, all right, all right. Before we get too far off track, though, anything anyway. else about BTO no. or MCR nope. and we'll, before we move on? Nope. Okay, <laughs> then, we'll, then we'll move on. Okay, so we're moving on. JGR. Mm -hmm. You guys want to start with Pike or Bogle? We can start with Bogle because we know who the better guy is on that team. Yeah, Bogle. No, Pike. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, guys. I mean, we kind of covered it in the in the last show. Like, I think he's going to do well. He finally got his first win at Bud's Creek, or no, Thunder Valley, and then he won the overall at Bud's. I just don't know about that bike. I'm not confident in that bike, and I think that if he does shitty and it's not a mental thing and it's the bike, I'll feel bad for him because he was on a tear. 
Just to clarify, you're on Pike, correct? No, I'm talking about Bogle. No, Pike hasn't got a win. <laughs> no, I was talking about Bogle. Oh, okay. I, See, about I Bogle. totally thought you were going on Pike and you. Okay, anyway, so you were on. So we're talking about Bogle right yeah, now. Yeah, I was talking okay. about Bogle. Yes, I don't know about the bike, and I don't know about how well he does in Supercross. We all saw how he did in outdoors, which was great, and I think he's going to have confidence and do better, but I still think at max, Bogle's a fifth to tenth place guy. He's an average guy. I don't even think he's I, in that second group. I give him fifth to tenth place. I really do. Because he's he uprooted, he's down at fucking. What's it called? He's Ricky's in, place. Yeah. So Man, I, I think Bogle's gonna do well this year. I think uh, last year was a big confidence booster, winning, mm -hmm. and uh, man, you training with the goat. I mean, yeah. so but we always talk about the second tier guys, aside from Marv, Kenny, Eli, and Ando's part of that. So we talk about Coop, Baggett, Dino, West, and those guys, Cole Sealy, you know, Brock Tickle or whatever. You guys think that Bogle is in that group because I think a lot of those guys can take a chance of. Stepping up and winning, obviously, I said about Baggett winning a Supercross main. I don't see Bogle ever winning a Supercross main. I didn't see uh, Bogle winning an outdoor race this year either, and he won fucking two. One of those two. mains. Um, Man, but he's think, not a good starter. He got to start outdoors, but look at his other starts. He was like 15th half the time. I mean... Like I said, I don't put him in I don't put him in a wing column anywhere along the line in, in indoors, but I put him in a 5th to 10th place spot week in, week out. Yeah, I, say I agree he, with that. I see he's 7th to 10th. I don't think sixth. I think fifth and sixth is a little bit too much to ask out of him. I think on a good day. Him. Yeah, I think he'll have moments. You know, some people are going to fall. Some people are going to have bike problems. Whatever those. Those are the yeah. days I think. So whenever you get hurt, okay. Yeah. And I know we bring this up, and we'll get to it with the tickle thing. On a good day, when everybody stays up, where's Bogle? Because that's what I'm getting out of you guys. You think he's in that second group, and I don't think he's even close to that. On a good on a good day. Like, I mean, when when, when, fucking, when yeah, up, Dino, Tickle, I, Marv, all stay up. Where is he? I I leave him in the eight eight to eleventh spot. Yep. Okay, is where I put him. Because yeah, there's some there's some bad dudes for sure there, but I still think he can get up there. And he, and if he keeps making improvements like he did last year, because obviously he made a lot of improvements mm -hmm. from beginning outdoors to end. So I think he gets one top five. I think he's been training hard. That's that's one yeah. thing he has going for him. I think. Uh, yep. That can push him up a little farther. So mm -hmm. all right, let's let's move on to your boy Pike. He is my boy. Let's uh, talk about the boy he's here. in that second group. Of the Dino, Cole Sealy, this and that. Like I, the lower end of the second group. But. <laughs> I was going to say, okay, so anyway. let's get so let's get this straight. You're going to put Pike in the second group, but you're not going to put Bogle in the second no, group. No, because right. Pike's best finishes, Bogle <laughs> hasn't even been close to Pike's best finishes in Supercross. Because Pike has come really close to winning outdoors. No. he Really? <laughs> really? He was one of the only guys that matched the top three before everybody else did outdoors. He got fourth back, back, to back, to back weekends. And he matched those guys. Would you like to take this, or do you want me to? No, you guys can. You guys can talk. Hey, no, it's, it's cool. It's cool, man. But if you look at their 450 career, where Pike was after he got a factory ride, compared to where Bogle started his career this past year, Bogle hasn't even been close to Pike's success. Oh yeah, yeah. Pike, is, Pike has been on a good day all the time. Top five. Oh, <laughs> who's got? Who's got more? Who's got more top fives? Who's got more wins? Really? Did, he, did, did Pike ever get a start outdoors? If he did, no, he, <laughs> never really he ain't winning. Uh, the last time he got a start outdoors in the top three, he podiumed. And that was against RV and Dunge. Okay. So, every fucking that dog finds in, a bone. That was in 2012? No, it was 2014. Yeah, he's he's getting weathered nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's a good term. What, Pike, hey, what, what did Pike get? Before he got hurt in Supercross this past year, what was his first two round finishes? Top fives. Oh, I don't know. Look, yeah, I don't look I'm not putting point. him any worse than Bogle, okay? He's I'm better still, than Bogle. I'm still putting him in a 5 to 10. He's game. better than Bogle. If if we say Bogle's 8 to 11 on a good day, everybody's good day, then I give him an 11 to 14 on a good day. Pike got top five two rounds in a row last year on everybody's good day. I, say, I don't put it back that far. I put him in like a, uh, like a sixth. To tenth, I give I give Bogle I give Bogle an eighth to eleventh, and I give Pike a six to tenth, especially indoors, because Pike is better indoors than what I've seen from him outdoors. All right, but just over the people that we've already talked about, <laughs> Pike is not beating Brayton. Yes, he is. He's beating Pike Brayton. Is not beating Baggett. He's not beating Baggett. He's not beating Baggett. I'll agree. I'll with. damn near say that Pike ain't beating Reed. <laughs> oh. Pike has been, okay, aside from Baggett, every one of these guys that you just listed, Pike has beaten consistently every year since they've been And in the he class definitely together. ain't beating J Mart. <laughs> He's beating J Mart. 
You guys can troll me all you want, dude, but I'll, I'll keep saying I'm not that. even trying to troll you. I'm giving you the honest opinion. I think he is a 5th to 10th place guy right in there with Bogle. I've put them both on the same level as far How as How long did it take go. Bogle get in the top five last year in Supercross? I don't remember, man. I don't yeah. keep all that information up here. Pike okay? got a fucking top five. At you know what I can keep round. up here? Wins and Kenny crashed. That's what I got up here from last I'm year. I'm just telling right? you, dude. I'm just telling you. He is not in the same. He is further along than Bogle. He has beaten Bogle almost every time they've raced together in Supercross. So yeah. you want to watch the like filters? What, 30 and Bogle's like what? Pike's the same age I am. He's 26. All right, what's Bogle? Bogle's like 24. All right, uh, they're pretty close, I guess. Yeah. No, dude, I'm just going off of a... <laughs> well, Pike since... looks weathered, let's be honest. <laughs> well, he's one of the biggest dudes in the class. <laughs> he's... I give him an 8 to 11th. I was, come... I was, I was kind of just poking and prodding at you when I said 11th to like 7th. I'm just going to tell you, dude, it's not going to be that. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll, be a, he'll be a 5 to 8 guy every fucking round that he doesn't crash. And he doesn't you, even crash that often. stamping it? Stamp it. Every round that he doesn't crash, 5 to 8th? Yeah, he'll be five to eight. Stamp it. Every round that he doesn't crash. And honestly, if you think about it, Weston doesn't even crash that often to be so. And I know, and everybody know, and we talked about this with the whole Dino thing, you got to give the guy credit. Look what he did outdoors. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I agree, but I don't give him a top five in Soupy. The only way he does not get a top five is if Kenny, Eli, Marv, and Baggett, and I don't know who the fifth guy would be, Get a start over him. That is, I give no, it, I give him maybe a me. couple top fives over the course of the year if a bunch of people get hurt, and by a bunch I mean a few like, get hurt. Okay, like Dino, no Kenny. <laughs> <and Eli. laughs> all I know is this Pike got a top five in a Supercross career before Dino did, so that's all I'm saying. Dino's been hurt, and though. Dino He's still doesn't have a, and, and Dino still doesn't have a podium. <laughs> What do you mean Dino doesn't Okay, all right. No, we'll cross. get to Dino. Supercross. We'll get to Dino. Let's stay that on fourth, track remember, here. Dog? The fourth. Anything Anything else with Pike and Bogle? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't have anything. I don't have anything. That's okay, great. all right. Let's move over then. Let's move over. Monster Yamaha. Question number one. Does Millsaps come back? Oh, I'm going to say no. Okay. Nope. All right. Pass Millsaps. He ain't coming back. A little bummed on that, to be honest with you, too. Yeah, same. Seems like he's pretty worried about that. Why don't that you condition? take Justin Barsha? Oh, Jesus Christ. Let's get this rolling. My boy. Okay, yeah. let's first off, before he goes into this little thing, let's make it known that aside from the Savachi argument, this is the biggest debate between us three, and it comes up at least once a day <laughs> for no other reason than to argue about it. Yeah, basically. basically. All right, so talk about your boy here who ain't going to do shit this year. So, Barsha. 11th um, to 14th place. Um, when I he's when he's solid, mm -hmm. 11th to 14th place. He's beaten Pike. 11th Let's to 14th be place. I can say he said say beat Dino too. Oh, uh, I'm gonna say yeah too. Yeah. 11th I'm a to Dino 14th guy. place. Mm -hmm. I'm saying Barsha is fifth to seven. <laughs> no way. For Not first. a chance in hell. Well, also no hold, way. Hold on one second. Dude. Look at what we're watching hold right on, now. Hold Monster on Cup. Hold on he one went second. 10, 10, 8. He, 10, 10, 5. 10, 10, 5? Yeah, 10, 10, 5. 10, 10, 5. It 10, 10, 10, 10, 5. Was a okay, fit. against hold nobody. Hold on, hold on. Nobody. Let's let's make it known, though, because if Davey doesn't come back, that means Barsha gets the ride, so he will not. It'll be for more than six rounds. Uh, I think for Barsha, I honestly believe this. On his good days, he is a fit top five guy, but I think that he will probably be a seventh to tenth guy. And I think that seventh for him is great, considering the past couple of years, how they've gone for him. But let's be real. Out of that second group of guys that we just mentioned that we think are on the cusp of getting a win, Barsha is with the doubt, out of doubt, the most talented guy of all of them. And he's accomplished more. He's accomplished more than Marv has. Agreed. I wouldn't argue with his accomplishments are better, but you're just a Barsha hater. I give him 9th to 14th. No fucking way, dude. On a good day, on a no. good day, no. he gets maybe 8th. Uh -huh. Oh no! He got he went ten ten five. He had a week on the bike. Nobody. He had a week on the bike. Nobody. A week on a bike. Privateer bike. If he's so fucking good, he should be able to throw his leg over. He fucking. Tomac couldn't even do that. Tomac can't even do that. Roxon couldn't win on a privateer bike. No way. No. No way. No way. I. There's no way. There are way too many bad dudes on here to put him in the top. Don't we always talk about how many times guys hit the deck? 
Uh, we do. This class. We do. And maybe you'll get lucky. Like, what was it, 15 when he finished second outdoors in points? And people will get hurt. And Dungey lucky, will fucking crash lucky in the mud. Beat, he'll get a win. Like, bro, maybe you go back lucky. and look at that. He beat Dungey. Like, three out of the six count. last yeah. times. Four, five, and I remember in 16, six. he beat Tomac the last three rounds straight up, too. So I, he doesn't get lucky. I personally think that when Barsh is on it, he can be on the same level as Webb. Oh, for sure, when he's on it. For sure. I agree. How many years are you going to have to wait for him to be back on it? Oh, this is the year. This is the year. This is the year. So what if he doesn't do shit this year? Are you two finally going to just be like, all right, you were right. He fucking sucks. No, no he doesn't no. suck. He doesn't he, suck. I, I don't jump on that bandwagon and then leave my boys. My boys are my boys. and they're How many years are they going to be your boys? How many times are they going to slap you in the pecker? And play like, sorry, man, we fucking so, can't do it. So they put a little leg on my face sometimes, <laughs> you know? Before, before you go, well, you know what, dude? It's time to cut the cord from you. All I know is this Marsh, Marsh is going to... He's going to do well this year. And he struggled in Supercross, but let's keep reminder that he has done good outdoors. So it hasn't just, he's been shitty completely. I think uh, personally he was, I don't know what it was, like maybe down in the dumps, confidence. He didn't want to well, do you know, he's on a different bike now, so he's probably going to do better. Well, technically no, he is. but I think he realized like, hey, I got to get my shit together. Otherwise, I'm never going to get a What did they do for Dean again. Wilson this past year? Right. What did they do for Dean Wilson? No, it's a different mindset. It does. It does. Plain and simple. Because he knew how much money he was going to have to put out. It could have been the last year that he raced. And look what it did for Dean Wilson. Now, I ain't saying that Barsh is going to go out and fucking win. I ain't even saying he's going to podium. But, yeah. dude, 7th to 10th for him with a couple top fives, maybe even just one top five, is better than anything that's happened in the past three years. Agreed. I give him maybe one top five when we get middle of the season and six of these dudes crash out. And, yeah, I will, maybe. and I will also say, <laughs> come, out, <laughs> top five. And I will also say come outdoors if he is gelling with that bike. People better watch out because if he did what he did the past two years on a gonna, shit bike, he isn't gonna gel with any bike until he gets back on a 250F. He doesn't well, know how to ride a fucking 450. Well, plain and simple. You cannot ride a 450 on the limiter. Second well, point. What, second what, of the point says otherwise. Yeah. What happened at Designations when he was like our big dog there? Yeah. And what did he look do? who we sent? And what did he do? He was what like the France? third string big dog. And what did he, he do was the one who? <laughs> yeah. What did he do with France? He beat, he beat Coop. Right. He beat Coop, and Coop had just come off beating Roman Febro. He Febra. beat and Coop. He Coop was a Coop. 250 dude on a 450. And, uh, and he was pacing the GP World Champion. Yeah. And Barsha was better. Oh, God, I can't handle this. Hey, rookie mistake. Sorry, you know, Zacho isn't in the 450 class yet. All I will say is, is that if he is gelling with that bike come outdoors, and you know that if Bill Seps doesn't come back, he will be on that bike. People need to watch out, because if he did what he did on the JGR bikes the past few years, he is definitely going to be a podium threat come outdoors on a factory bike. I say by Phoenix, we are getting press releases every single day. This is if he hasn't hit the deck yet and been like, oh, I hurt my wrist, I can't fucking ride anymore. By Phoenix, round four. Four rounds <laughs> in, we're getting press releases or fucking tweets from him that okay, say, "Okay, two things you know that oh, he the bike sucks. You know that the he bike hasn't, sucks. You do know that this he hasn't new been Yamaha healthy. isn't worth a shit. You know he hasn't been healthy this for new Supercross Yamaha sports. Sucks. Hold on a second. You know he hasn't been healthy for Supercross going go. in. Any other excuses you want to? That's not an excuse. It's being like his Pirelli tires. Let's go. Let's go to the resident also. expert on injuries over here and tell you what kind of that shit sets you back going into it. Let alone on that level. Way back. You don't want to talk about his tires not being. I don't give a shit about that. All I'm saying is, is that. Or you want to talk about. JGR, who what has JT? a better hey, shop than what? any other pro no. team out there uh -uh. with no, more no. toys uh -uh. in it than any uh -uh. other pro team. Experience. They can't no. set, they can't set what the did J What did JT... No, actually, How many years have they been around there? Actually, they, actually hold, on, hold on a second. Actually, they can't because all of their people that they've had ride for them have hated their bikes. This yeah, goes back right. to the Josh Summy days. Way before you were around Moto. This is 2008, whoa, bro. Whoa, I remember Josh Sumney, all right? Yeah, all I'm saying is, is that he... <laughs> this goes back fucking 10 years. Stu couldn't fucking ride their bikes, and all I said is, is stiffen the fuck out of the forks. <laughs> and he couldn't ride their bikes. We remember those JGR days. They were shitty. Oh, and he had yeah. just come off a championship. JGR does not know how to set up a bike because they're so used to being right from the NASCAR days that they don't want to take their pride and tone it back a little bit and listen to their guys. Well, now I'm not got, saying now Barsha. Got Yosh, so maybe now they're going to get their I'm not saying Barsha is easy to deal with because we all know he's a prick. He's been a prick since the amateur days. But he is still, without a doubt, one of the most talented fucking dudes riding a dirt bike in the world. And on any given lap, can be faster than anybody. And he's proven that before. I agree. He has. I'm not saying he's going to win. I'm not even saying he's going to podium. But come on, dude. 7th to 10th, it's not that hard to fucking conceive that that's going to happen. Yeah, name seven dudes that are going to beat him. Dino, Ando, Tickle, Marv, Tickle, Eli, oh my god, Webb, here we go with this Tickle shit. Uh, Baggett, Kenny, Seeley, 
You want me to keep going, or because you're running out? Really? And how? And, and all those guys I that we just toes, bitch. And, all, and all those guys that we just named, other than the main three, how consistent are they? Because last time I checked, most of those guys did pretty shitty last time last year in Supercross on certain weekends. They're, well, they're more <laughs> consistent than Barsha because they didn't have to fucking. Well, go actually, uh, no, they're not because <laughs> Barsha got second and tier, huh? Barsha got second and third in the last two outdoor championships, other than this past year. So actually, no, they're not more consistent than him. I'm sorry. What was I'm sorry. Na name, name, what was Cole two, name two other dudes I just listed. I said besides Kenny Marvin Eli. That showed up to uh, uh, Monster Cup on a privateer bike because they didn't have a ride. Does he have a ride now? Uh-huh. Okay, that's all I got to know. Okay. He has a ride now. Great. All right, that was great. Okay. Okay. Anyway, okay. now let's move on, on, to on to somebody a little less controversial in the group here. <laughs> Cooper Webb. How do you think he's going to do? I have no fucking idea. Me neither. Um, <laughs> oh God, hold on, he's thinking. He's trying to come up with something witty, and he's yeah. like, I don't know either. Uh, you can just say, I don't know, we can move on from this, because yeah, none of us give, really know. I'm going to give him like a 6 to 8. Well, I heard he just hit the deck. But that's a lot of people in 6 to 8, is all I'm saying. <laughs> Not a good there thing. is. There is. <laughs> so, you're going to give him 6 I really don't know. I, don't, I haven't seen or heard a lot, other than I know he was riding the 18 a shit ton last year before the season ended, but... I'll tell know. you. I'll tell you what I think. I do know is he, Yamaha is not gonna have a team next year. No, he's gonna be on Red Bull KTM. Yeah, next year. he's he's gonna take uh, Tickle spot, or they're gonna open a third spot if Tickle really kills it this year. So, I say on a good uh, man. I don't know. I'm so conflicted with Coop. I think this is his last year to prove something. Even though everybody said he's going to Red Bull next year, I think that if he lives up to the hype that we all thought he could do coming off 250s, I think he's just as good as Kenny and Eli. Because we see him do things in the 250 class that we hadn't seen in a long time. And I'm talking about, like, outright speed. Like, mm -hmm. on any given lap, be two and a half seconds faster than guys. Not just a half a second a second. I'm talking about two, two and a half. He won three straight championships, two in Supercross, and then won the Outdoor Championship. I just, I don't know. I don't know I, where he's I don't know be. either, because I feel like he's way better than we've seen last year. So... Yeah, so I don't. Know. I don't know. I don't want to speculate. I want to watch a couple rounds of him and see how he does because everybody says, "Oh, the 18's better," and he likes it more and all this crap. But to get on a track with dudes, I don't know. I don't know either. <sighs> that, that's that's to be decided, on my opinion. Me I too. I think that I have to wait till the first three rounds to and see. And you what give he does. him six to eight. I think he, I think he could be better than that if he. He's a top five. Like Can we all agree that when if Coop is Coop? He's top five yes. all day long. He hasn't had enough shitty seasons in I, a row for me to doubt that. So. Oh, yeah. I think he's like, there's like a second tier. I think Ando, Baggett, and him are in that group, and I think they have the most potential of moving up to the next group. Can we also, if though, get the if he... So anyway, let's finish up Webb here. Okay. Camera malfunction. Anyway, if he, is, if he was the guy that we all thought he was going to be, and he didn't have a bad year. Can we all admit that he probably was going to be a podium guy? No. Yeah. You don't think he would have been a podium guy with all that yeah. success he had in the 250 class? No. Dude, he did. Right now. I think the whole industry thought he was going to be a podium he guy. He did more, but he was better on it. You could honestly say numbers-wise, he was better on a 250 than even Eli and Kenny were, which he actually was. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I know it doesn't, transition over I'm, the 450 is going to... But if, no, I'm saying if he would have. If we all did what he thought he, we all thought he was going to do, that's what I'm saying. Maybe. See, I just think that if he lives up to his potential, there's no reason he can't be with those three guys. In my opinion. There's no way. You said uh, Eli and Kenny. That's two guys. Well, Marv, I think that it's kind of just <laughs> natural to put him in there because, you know, it's fucking... I, I don't just... I don't like saying his name. Okay. Just rather hey, hear him hey, it was Justin Barsha. <laughs> way in the back. Shocker. Fuck off. It was um, good Anything else for Monster Yamaha or what was the other team we talked about? JGR. Before no. We, before we move on here. Nope. Nope. Okay. No, Next up. Just, might as well just fucking go right to Dino. Might as well just, Rock, you know. Rockstar Husky. Let's just might as well let Matt talk for about three hours. You have 37 seconds to talk about Dino. By the way, Show. anybody doesn't know, Matt's he's Dino, a Dino fanatic. Dino's his boy. Yeah, Dino that's, that's is my boy. Dino's his boy. Um, 37 seconds, go. Riding great. It's over with. <laughs> Has confidence. He he is. Where is he finishing? A one finish spot. Go. Oh, that's on the spot. Uh, when I'll he doesn't, I'm pulling this. I want to say six to seventh, but Ooh, wow. yeah, I'm gonna give him six to seventh. Where I, is he I, on? I actually am not gonna argue that either. So is he? 
I'd like to see him top five. Like mm -hmm. I, I would like to see him fourth or fifth, but I think that's uh, being pretty optimistic right now. I think there's a lot of guys out there that are I could, it. I could see him in fourth to fifth at points during the yeah. season, but not consistently every single week. Yeah. I think the fact that even though it was some, it's an off-season race and it was just a heat race, the fact that he beat Marv straight up and pressured him into like five mistakes is going to help him confidence-wise. But like I've told you before, the only thing that makes me nervous with Dino is I think he's trying to make up for too much lost time all the years he blew out his knee. And he hasn't taken a week off in like a year now. He's literally ridden like probably every fucking day to try to make up that time. And it just it bothers me because I think he's going to burn himself out halfway into the season. Do you love what you do? I think right now he's in a in a happy place. Yeah, he's got good so. people behind him, good bike, confidence is the highest it's been, knees, injuries, everything's healed. I think uh I think this is gonna be his breakout year. Out of that second group of guys, so I'll wait to ask you, but I think I know where you're going. Is he the sec is he the next guy to step up, in your opinion? And we're talking about like the Dino and the Sealy um, and stuff like that. I, I do think so. I personally think Barsha can beat Dino mm -hmm. on a good day, but Dino is the next guy. I think um, I think he's making it uh, apparent that he's going to be the next guy. And I think training with Ando and mm -hmm. being so close with Ando is really helping him out. What do you think? Do you think he's that in that second group? Because I still put Ando in that first group. Yeah, I do too. I, yeah, I think Dino Webb... Um, Baggett. And Baggett, yeah, I think that's like the the, the A2 group mm -hmm. of their, you know, probably m most normal nights, uh, uh, a fourth to eighth place dude, depending upon starts and stuff. Um, but there is the potential there to have that breakout ride, to get a win, to get a podium on any given week. So, yeah, yeah, be, yeah, uh, yep, that's where I'm at. I mean, Dino's my boy, but I don't give him a a win maybe i don't see him i don't see him winning not, at this not, point honestly, but he's young enough that he can out do you know he like eli will retire kenny uh, well, well, well wait a minute though dino is 24 years old going on 25 so he's not young yeah, anymore yes that's true he I, has been around it just doesn't seem like it because he missed three years in the four yeah, it's kind of like marv he was hurt so much that you but think fucking he's young but marv is you the forget same he's the same age he's no he's the same age as you well no wait a minute you just turned 29 he's 28 still Okay, well, whatever. Well, he's no, he's just up on the, yeah. bed, you know. Um, I don't think, this is no shot at Dino, because I do believe that he's going to have a breakout year. I don't think he podiums, but I think on average he's 5-7th. to seventh, Every main. Yeah, I, th I, I can I see that. that. I think on a good day, though, where guys like Ando and Baggett and then, you know, the three, I think that it's, it's hard for him. It's going to be hard for him to get in that top five because those guys are so good. But I think that he is one of the guys with Baggett that could make the next step. It's just, man, I'm still... Dino still makes me nervous every time I watch him ride. I love watching him ride, but he's been hurt so many damn times that it makes you think, oh, man, if he dabs his foot wrong in the corner one fucking time, he's going to blow his knee out again. But, man, he's been silky smooth. Oh, he's he looked good. style. He does. Days. He does. So I think five to seven when I think multiple top fives. Okay. What about Ando? I think Ando makes the next step. I, I think Ando's hungry. I and think he's, he's over Marv. I think he's I think he's over the Baker's factory is he, what I really think. He, go, he goes away. For anybody that doesn't know, Ando's not at the Baker compound right now. He's been out in California testing with the team since uh, right before the Ozex Open. Yep. And this is the first time ever, I think, that any Baker person has not been at the compound before the first round of Supercross. Mm -hmm. Even the even back to the Weimer and Rach, Rattray days, they were at the Baker compound. Yep. And I said it back when we were doing the outdoor shows. I think that Ando's over. I think he leaves next year. I think he is, too. I think it's finally gotten to the point that he doesn't want to play second fiddle like we've talked about. And Especially yeah. now that Dunge isn't there anymore. Yeah. Because he was fine with that. He looked yeah. up to Dunge. Dunge yeah. was kind of like a big brother. Him and Marv, even though Marv's been doing it longer, he looks at him and Marv as, as hey, I was better than Marv when uh -huh. we started off. Yep. And I still think I am. I, I think that Ando is very hungry. It's just we all know how inconsistent Ando can be. I think that it might bite him a few times this year like it has yep. in the past. Mm -hmm. But let's all be real. He can win. Yep. And he's proven oh, it. Yeah. He can win. I think he'll have a win. I think so. I think that's another did he get a, Did he get a win last year? The bullshit in Vegas. Oh, yeah. Which, by the way, we were wrong. I forgot. Marv won twice. You remember he won in Seattle, too. Forgot yeah. about the Seattle win. Yeah. Wait. We thought it was, should have been three because the East Rutherford thing with Dungy. He got the win in Houston or in Arlington and Seattle, and then he should have won East Rutherford. Oh, that was oh, when he pulled over. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. no, he didn't pull over, remember? Oh, yeah. I yeah. saw him kind of... No, he just tracked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, no. Ando's 
Ando's one of those guys that's kind of like, where do you put him? And I think a lot of people have that question because everybody kind of throws him in that first group because he's got speed and he's won. Mm -hmm. But <sighs> I give him third to fourth. Over under, does he take Marv out once this year? <laughs> um, at that uh, off season race, he gave oh, him a good little clip. But no, does he straight up if they're in a position where he's he's pacing Marv and he has to go around him and Marv's making it hard? Does he take him out? Oh, I yeah, mean, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because I think so, too. Look at the track record. I think so, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. Well, oh, boy, I ain't afraid to put a front wheel in there. Ando does get multiple wins this year, and I think that it's not just the Monster Cup format. I think he straight up wins because I think he is hungry enough. I just I don't want it to get overzealous and go backwards because of it. I give him a win. Oh, a win? Oh, whoa, sorry. Let's say a win on... The normal formats. I the abbreviated mains, man. That's just it's too hard to predict. Yeah, yeah. I, on regular mains, I give him one win. I think um, I think Kenny and Eli are hungry, West, too hungry right now for him to get multiples. West Coast or East Coast? Does West. it happen West? Do you think it happens oh, early? Oh, okay. West. All right. Okay. You think he gets a win? Yeah, okay. I think he gets one. Okay. My, Which by I'm the, with Matt on that. I mean, I think with one. If you look at his track record, other than. Was it 16? He's gotten one or two wins a year. So. Well, yeah, because you're going to have one race where he's just going to click all mm -hmm. day. But Kenny and Eli aren't going to be feeling it, and he's going to go out and just, that's it. How many wins did he have last year? He had one. Just the one in Vegas, and, and we all know what happened. But the year before that. he was packing. Yeah. Tomac was packing everybody up. And the year and before really that, it was like a, a no. win. But then he got two his rookie year. He got the one at A1 and then the one in Detroit given to him. So that's why I say, even though that some of them were kind of, he still is at least good for one win. Two out of the three years he's been in the class. Yep. Yep. So anything else, Rockstar Husky wise, here before? No, but I think that they're one of the teams that have two solid guys. Where everybody else, you could say there's a huge disparity between their top guy and their second guy. Sure. Yep. Yep. Other than you know your fucking favorite guy, we're just coming up. Oh, we're coming up here. So oh, Red good. Red Bull KTM. Let's no, just fucking go. Let's go. Who you want me to talk about? Now you might as well talk about your your other boy. Brock Tickle? Yeah, that's that your mother boy. <laughs> that's my Tickle, boy. I don't, know what, with, Tickle, I, don't know Tickle. What it, I don't know what it is with you and Alden Baker fucking guys, but Jesus fucking between him and Zach. Tickle Tickle's making a charge this oh year, buddy. God fuck. Um, he's gonna make he is gonna do so well this year that Red Bull is not gonna have a choice. Red Bull KTM is not gonna have any choice but to have a three-man team next year to bring Webb over and keep those two. He is. He's gonna be the next Zach Osborne. He's going to go to the whoa, Baker's whoa, Factory whoa, here, whoa, whoa. and all of a sudden he's going to come out this year, and you're going to be like, holy I mean, his, shit, his where, the hell, a lot hotter than where the hell is this boy a wet towel and cool? Jeez, where, where, right now? Where, did Brock, where did Brock, did Brock Tickle come from? Now, now, let's get this straight here. Mm, fuck. I don't give him wins, okay? You give him a podium? All this bullshit you're talking about. I give right him now. a podium mm -hmm. and a consistent fourth to seventh week in, week out. Okay. We're stamping that one. Okay. We will look back. At can, that can, one. I, can I? Can I? Can I? Are you, you got more to say? <laughs> no, not until you guys start saying. Okay, can I go to my tangent? Oh, okay, my so here we go. Thirty-seven okay. seconds. Also, go. Thirty-seven seconds. Okay, so let's be clear. Brock Tickle has never had problems with motivation. We all know that he's consistent. We know he's nope. a grinder. Nope. This structure is going to help him. Yep. But I also think it's kind of a detriment to him because he is not known for one of those guys, even though he's had fastest qualifier before, to go in on any given lap and just pull the trigger and separate himself from everybody else. Which I think that you have to be that way to be the next guy coming up, like a Dean Wilson, like a Cole Seeley, so on and so forth. And I think that Brock is so consistent, but that's not why he does good. He does good because he wears you down physically, because you know he's not going to get tired, and he wears you down mentally because not many guys can go four tenths off their fastest lap, lap after lap after lap. And even all this going to Elton Baker and being on the team, I just don't see him being two seconds faster than what he was this past year. I think that he gets the most top fives he's ever gotten this year. Now that's whatever you perceive to be most top fives. I don't think he gets another podium like he did this last year. The guys are too good. But I think on a average basis, he's 8 to 10, and on good days, he's 5 to 7. So you can put him on good days with a Dean Wilson. On his average days, he's 8 to 10, because we've talked about it before. When all these dudes are clicking, he ain't better than Webb. He ain't better than Baggett. He's not better than Anderson. He ain't better than Dino. And yeah, I mean, he hasn't beaten him. If you really want to go look back at it, he's not beating Dino over their career together. It's okay. It's okay. No, dude, like, I get it. He's going to have a big jump this year, but I can't see him being four to seven. There's no fucking Where way. Where do you right, think man. he finishes in points? At the end of the year? Points. I th in points? Yep. 
I think that he is eight. I was gonna go seventh. So what's, seventh. What's his best? His best finish? Yeah, and points wise. Do we know? Oh, I think his best finish in points in the 450 class is like eighth. He hasn't done that well because he doesn't have the outright speed. He's consistent. Oh, they call him they called him a silent assassin last year or whatever, didn't they? Like the, no, yeah, no, he has, Eli's a silent assassin. He has had a nickname over the years, but it, he is consistent. He you can honestly say, take out the top three dudes, he's the most consistent in the class. I he say he's somewhere second fourth last year, right? What? Yeah, he got a second yeah. in Toronto because he pulled the start. <laughs> I think he's fourth to sixth in points at the end of the year. On the back end or the front end of that? Because dude, if you're saying top five, a whole. Oof, that's tough. Well, four to six. I mean, there's either right, is he he's six? fourth, fifth, or sixth. Yeah, that's why I'm saying if you're in the top, I don't oh, know. I'm saying he's somewhere between those spots. Like I don't want, oh, I don't want to specify a certain point. Point. He's saying sixty six percent chance that he's going to be top five in points. Which is basically that's saying, tough. which is basically saying that he's going to probably beat Dean Wilson, Baggett, Webb, and Ando. You're saying that on a, a consistent basis that he's going to do. That. So make the Eighth, point in the points. He is going to finish fourth to six. So make the record the that if he's in the four, top five, that means he's better than Dean Wilson. Cole Seeley, Cooper Webb, Blake Baggett, and Jason Anderson. Yes. No fucking way. He has never beaten those guys on a consistent basis, ever. Okay. No, okay. I, I, all right. Let's all right. Do what do you think, Matt? We're definitely going to be going back to that. Oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> what happens if he comes out and bombs? Are you going to actually, are you going to own up to it? He did better than Justin Barsha at fucking Oh, my God. Monster, Monster Cup. Cup. Would you get over and Monster you Cup? you assholes keep wanting to say, oh, Barsha's would a you fucking get over, podium dude. Would you get over Monster Cup? Nobody cares no, about that race. Technically, we didn't say he was a podium dude. Technically, we said he was like, what, five dudes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that. But whatever. Yeah. Oh, she's pretty hot. I like her. Shoes. So, anyway. Um, okay. Okay, so let's just get off the tickle thing here. We all know where we stand. Thank I think he's going to do better than you two do. I also what do you think, though? Because, like I said, what do you think he's actually going to end up, though? Are you on the same train as me, I'm or do you look like better? six to eight. Okay. Somewhere in there. I think, okay. it, man, I've said six to eight for like seven people. <laughs> I know, we got the same <laughs> thing for the 250 um, thing. You said you fucked hard to had like 30 guys in the top ten. Um... I think um, his first race, I think at A1, he's going to do well. I think mm -hmm. he's going to be right around 5th, 6th, okay. maybe 7th. But then I think he's going to slowly fade back in the middle of the season. And then at the end of the season, I think he's going to push back forward because I think... Why do you think he's going to fade? Because um, I think people are going to start getting into their grooves. And I think that uh, the people, once they mm -hmm. start getting into the grooves, they start, you know getting better finishes, and then at the end of the season, I think people are going to get tired where that's, I think, where Tickle excels, and he can power okay. through the end of the season. Plus, I think he's going to do shitty at Daytona, and that's really going to put him back in the points. All right, so let's move on to the next dude on that team. The you guys' favorite dude. rider. Marvin Muskin. He's your favorite guy, right? How many wins does he get this year? Not as many as you think. Well, that's why I'm asking. How many wins? Yes. Okay, well, I've said Baggett and Nando are going to get multiple wins. So, at most, you could say that that's four right there. We haven't got to Kenny and Eli. Well, that'd be at least. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I think, I think. well, I, I don't think that they're going to get more than two wins. So, that's why yeah. I say four okay. total. Okay, okay. Um, Touche. I say he gets two wins. He doesn't win as much as everybody thinks. And the reason why? 17 rounds. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do that math in your head? Or you want me to get uh, your calculator? So, you want to say... Three to four. You want to know why he's not going to get? You think more? he's going to get four wins? How many is Tomac? Oh, never mind. Three we got to still talk about that. Three, two to. Th I don't know, man. Mark was <laughs> looking good. I'm a. I am a Tomac guy. But you know why he's not going to get more than that? Because people have figured out he can't handle pressure. Or whoops. No, well, the whoops, wow. you can't really exploit that, though, like, yeah, personally. the mains, anyway. The mains, the whoops are all cupped out. Anyway. They're flat so as fuck. You could, just, they, you could manual, through, to, yeah, you could manual through. through. Unfortunately. J, JT alluded to it, and I've said it for a while, but let's go back to even, I don't want to go back to a different series, but look at outdoors. What happened to second, second moto at Southwick with Tomac? He jumped off the track. <laughs> and, why, and why was that? Why was he had pressure. Mark can't handle pressure, and I think guys are finally fucking figuring that. I mean, I think Anderson has known that because he practices with him. But guys are finally figuring out because the two races that he got beat at Paris Supercross, he got pressured hard fucking core by Cole and Dino, and he went off the track like six fucking times. He can't handle pressure. I think that if guys really start running in on him and getting flustering him, I think that that is something that they can... That's as a rider, you can exploit that. The Wolves thing, either he's going to be good or he's going to be bad. But as a rider, everybody knows you can exploit that weakness. Yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting, too, because I think, um, say, everyone stays healthy... Mm -hmm. 
Eli or Kenny are always going to be up there to pressure him. And you know, Kenny, and I don't think he can just walk away from either of them because no, last way. year Tomac looked amazing in Supercross. Kenny always looks amazing. And let's and let's be real. Kenny doesn't give a fuck about taking anybody out. But Eli has come to I honestly think I don't know about hate, but I think he's come to dislike Marv quite a fucking bit. Like I went back and watched that Seattle race that he came from dead last and won, and I forgot how hard he fucking ran in on Marv and that left hander coming across the start line. I mean, he literally ran him all the way to the bales, and Eli normally doesn't do that. Like he likes to make things nice and you know stick. Eli's not known for wanting to take people out. I think Eli will have no fucking problem taking Marv out if he gets in the way. Oh, especially if Kenny's on a tear and yeah, and is in the lead. So see, I get see okay. So I give Marv two wins unless yeah. unless he doesn't get a win by round six. If he goes six rounds without winning, he'll be or, one. I don't think he gets one at see, all. I wow. think he could do really well in those abbreviated mains though. His starts he, have been on I point. His starts yeah. are on point, and he's hard to pass. But the thing yeah. is, but the thing is, okay, with these abbreviated mains, we keep talking about it. Do they look at like mentally? Do these guys look at those when they win an abbreviated main like that? Like, oh, I won a main, or is it? Well, I won like a heat race. Because ultimately, it adds up like the Monster Cup format. Yeah. It's, it doesn't like it goes as a main win, but it's like whatever fucking you get in yeah. points. Ultimately, it's two out of two out of the best three. To yeah. Get the main. Yeah. So, so like I said, I mean, yeah, you win one, but is it like winning heat races? Well, that, that's what I'm talking about. I'm unless saying, you win, unless you win the last one, because yeah. the last one's pretty long. It's like 18 minutes. Yeah, I'm so. not. I'm saying um, overall win. Mm -hmm. That's where I could see him getting an overall win. Yeah, he's at an abbreviated main. Yeah, because he is good at starts. So yeah, yeah, he which gets, clicks off those first two smaller races because uh, I'm not quite sure. It doesn't it go. I think it's like eight, eight, twelve, eighteen, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. For the 450 okay. guys, yep. I think. so. I just I think that people... That's one thing, though, that I do think everybody's got to get figured out is their starts. Because Marv has been on point with his starts for like the last fucking hey, six months. You see that, though. Dino and Tickle, you see there right there. Oh, Jesus. Actually, it's I forgot. Barsha went 10 6, 5. Yeah. I thought he got 10 10 for I some fucking reason. I thought he did, too. Mm. But, anyways, but anyway... Um, so two like wins. I, like I said though, if he doesn't if he doesn't win by round six, because by then we're through the we're first the East Coast. three ones, we're into the East Coast. If he hasn't put it together and won one, I don't think he wins one all year. I don't think he does, especially if Kenny and Eli are both there. Yeah, I don't I think, think he does. The East Coast is where Kenny and Eli are gonna really accelerate on everyone. So mm -hmm. I got him for two wins. You got him for two. What do you got him for? You got him for one. <laughs> I said two to three, but now that I'm thinking about it, it's like a, it's hard. From one to two, and you said if he gets a win before before round six, he wins two or two, three. two or three, two. two. I give okay. it two. I give it two. All right, all right. That's. So, I mean, I think it's good. Yeah. Enough. So, anything else about KTM or Husky before we move on to the last two here? No, I mean I'm good. Okay, pretty much said all you say about those two guys. All right, cool. So we'll move yeah, on. Look at Dean Wilson. Okay. The big dogs. The big dogs are going to eat here now, buddy. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got it set up where we talk about Cowie and Honda. You want to talk about the lesser ones and then go to the real big dogs? Yeah, so yeah. we're going to talk about Cowie and Honda. We'll talk about the second string dudes, and then we'll move into the first string dudes. <laughs> Jeez, dude. If I was Cole Sealer or JG, I'd be super pissed if somebody called me second stringer. Everybody does. I know, but they're yeah. assholes. You want me to call them B team? Yeah, like, it's better. It's okay, better. fine. We'll talk about the B team this, dudes there first. There are snowflakes out there. Okay. You call JG. I didn't call JG a snowflake. So, so, so you're the Cowie boy. You talk about Grant. You talk about Sealy. Three, two, one, go. Sealy's gonna have a better season than Grant. Yes. <laughs> okay. I think um, I think Sealy will beat him in the points, but I think Grant will get a higher finish than Sealy. JG did come on strong. I feel like we're having like a fucking actual like debate. Right this now is good. This go, is keep weird. going. Keep no, going. JG great. like he came on strong at the end of last season. He what had his best season since probably the '09 year. And JG like yeah, uh, I just I think he's he's getting long in the tooth. I mean he's not old, but he's been doing this for since 2004. His teeth are long. Yeah, I'm confused. Jesus Christ. I don't know what the right. fuck that Can we turn that on? Either, but... I don't know. Anyway. You're getting old. You're getting long in the tooth. You're getting old. He is older. Okay. We'll go with it. I think okay. that I think <laughs> I think that he's not as willing to take as many chances. And I think that you're at a day and age now where guys I think it's been that way for a while, but specifically now, guys have no problem hitting the deck to try to make a little bit of extra money, especially with the way everything is going. And I just don't believe that JG, if somebody ups the pace to 
past his comfort zone, he's willing to take those risks anymore. But you think Sealy is? Sealy's not because that's not his style. But Sealy is so fucking smooth and so technically sound that he just Supercross comes natural to him. I mean, the dude came from the BMX world, so he introduced a lot of shit that we don't. The way he just pumps the bike and the fact that he can manual over and you know just how low he stays to the bike, I just think that Sealy. He is one of those guys that, like you talk about Dean Wilson, he can make the next jump. Well, he's already got a win before. He has already won. He won a couple years ago. Yep. I'm not saying he's going to win. I don't think that's going to happen. But I think he is in that next group that if we want to talk about guys moving forward, Sealy's the guy. I just My problem with Cole is, is that his starts are shit. <laughs> his starts are terrible, and JG is good at starts. You're not lying about that. His starts are shit, and we all saw what happened in the MX Nation. Oh, um, it's terrible. <clears throat> They're close Do you to the put same Sealy though. Sealy in a top five. Situation. Does he get a top five? Yes. Oh, for sure. You he think gets... he's a top five guy consistently? Not consistently because of his starts. I think his speed and talent is top five. Did don't look me in the eye. It's weird. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but um... no, talent and speed top five. His starts are what bothered me, and that's why I think that that's what holds him back. Because if you look at a lot of situations this past year, not outdoor supercross. His speed, you looked at the end of the main the lap times, he was 4th and 5th a lot of times, but he's coming from 17th. He was riding really well uh, in that off-season race mm-hmm. as well. So I And he did beat Mark straight up, I too. I do have to give him that. I think um, I think he'll have a better overall season than JG, but I personally think JG's going to Does JG get, get a, podium? a better top finish. Does JG um, get a podium? Well, you got to think there's going to be at least one race mm-hmm. where everybody – all over the place, hits oh, yeah. the deck, and I think um, JG's a a good a good guy to put in there. Third, fourth contender. If if people are scrambled up, getting bad starts, falling. You think this is his last year because his contract his contract is up at Cowie, I think, right? I think um, so. Is this is last yeah, year. Yeah, I think it's his last year. I think uh, they're gonna put a young stud in there. I think so under too. Under Eli, so they mm-hmm. can kind of learn Adam from Eli what? before he. What? what? I hope. Me too. Adam Cinzarello? I know. Oh, who said that? Yep. You know, what do you what? think? I'm with him. I think Grant's got more raw speed mm-hmm. to the point that he's going to get a better finish at some point, but mm-hmm. I think Sealy's going to beat him in the points. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to argue that at all because I feel like Sealy's way more consistent. Sealy's like quietly, consistently good. His just starts are shit. Yeah. Like, like he gets a shitty start and you don't hear about him and then you look at the results and oh, he finished sixth. And, and it's, it's like. Not- it's not like he had, doesn't have the speed either, because no, he does yeah. have and his wolf speed's speed. good too. His yep. wolf speed's good too. Yep. No, I, I agree. He doesn't look like he's like really going fast. Yeah, he's not he's ragged so edge. Yeah. Smooth. I, I he's not like that. Anderson. He's like no. Cole just sits really low in the cradle, and that's kind of it. Yep. He's really hunched over. No, I agree with that. I think that JG does have more raw speed. He's proven it. It's just like I said. I think that Cole ends up more top fives, but his starts are what bothered me a little bit. So yeah, I can agree with that. I can okay. see it going both ways. How many wins does Eli get this year? Oh, this is going seventeen and zero. Oh my <laughs> God! <laughs> oh, let me put that down here with your bro, one. bro. I never heard a Cowie four fifty on the over rep. Bro, he bro. was going so fast. He's going so fast. He came by me. I peed a little bit. <laughs> like Jesus. Um, no, I obviously. The wins are gonna, I think, personally be split between Kenny and Eli, and I mm-hmm. think, um, I think the the big green dog is gonna let her eat and <laughs> come out on top. But so, um, other than seventeen and zero, because he couldn't even go twenty four and zero when no one was riding, um, how many does he get? So you say Marv has one, two. Anderson has one. Dino has four or five. No, <laughs> um, I think um, you can put him at five to seven. How crazy would it be before I? How crazy would it be if Baggett, Ando, and Marv don't win anything, and literally Kenny and Eli are the only two dudes that win anything? I hope that's not how it is. I don't. But I, I, I could see could it. See it. Yeah. I mean, would it be really that? Wild to say that that could actually that's actually no, like if we're talking no. in a real world, yeah. That could no, it's, it's not that wild. Yeah. Oh, you'd man. like to split it up though, yeah. You'd like we, to think there's going to be multiple winners. We don't want this man, to be the Carmichael Stewart days. No, we tear. don't, we don't want to see that big of a disparity between everybody else. So, how many wins do you think Kenny gets? Oh, I can't expand on Eli. 
No, I want to know how many. How many wins does Kenny get? get? Oh, You're the Kenny guy. Man. He's the Eli guy. So Who are I'm you? Just, are you in between? I'm sitting are you, middle. Are you Kelly? Are, 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 are you Kelly? No. It is green on a third of this and red on two thirds. Are you? Are you? Don't sit here. Wait a minute. Are you? You just say you're in the middle. Does that mean you're a Kelly or a Eleni? Are you Kenny and Eli? The Kelly sounds better. The Kelly does sound. Okay, I'm gonna go with Tozen. All right. But uh, watch this video get the most hits or maybe ever. Rock ever. Rack. Rest, <laughs> rock Rack. Well, let's be honest. Dr. E. Oh my God. Dr. E. You've been pulling this shit since taking these boys to the clinic this year. I mean. Okay, so back to the original question. How many wins does Kenny get this year, man? Man, I don't. I really don't know because I don't even know how many wins Eli gets. I, like, I think that they're going to win more than anybody else. But if you really start talking about it, you're already looking at six wins for the other few guys. If I were to go out on a limb, and I don't want to because I... Fuck. Man, that's really hard. I think... It, I'll put it this way. I think it'll be more possible to happen that Kenny and Eli split wins than Kenny getting more wins than Eli or Eli getting more wins than Kenny and those other guys getting wins. So basically, I think that they would be. it's going to be easier for them to split wins than one guy getting more wins than the other and everybody else getting, more, getting two wins. I just... I don't know because we all know what Eli did last year. But, but, we all know what Kenny was doing up until that point, dating back to outdoors, going into Supercross. I just, I don't know. I really can't put a number on it. Like, I can't put a number on it even if they're both on point. I just don't know. Kenny's going to win eight races. That's what you're saying? Yep. So who's... Eli's going to win five or six and then split the rest of them between the other guys we talked about that can win. So Man. you're saying um, Kenny's winning the ship. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll get on. to that later. Whoa, dude, right, no, right. we're part of the show. You stick to the script. Don't jump a fucking head. Don't jump ahead. <laughs> You're getting way ahead on us. All right, all right, all right, all right. My bad, my bad. I'll just say I think it's more apt to happen that they split wins than one getting more than the other and guys getting wins. I'm going to say if you have to choose who's getting more wins, you know. Dr. E is getting more wins. <laughs> okay, so, so, how many more, so how many more wins is more wins, though? I mean, Are you like talking one about or two. Okay. You know, basically splitting, but I think Big Dog's going to let her eat. So, so in other words, my call of, well, Kenny's going to win eight and Eli's going to win five or six isn't really far off from what you think. You just put it the opposite way here. Yeah. And, I'm not, and I'm not on either side of those because I, don't, I think they're too good for it to be that many. Well, there's 17 races. I think um, it's right. going to be like eight, or no, 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 no. It's going to be like six and five, 11 races, eh, seven and six maybe. We'll say 13 races, and then those four races are split up between the others. So, okay, so let's ask another question here. How many times does Eli's front brace lock up this year? Never going to happen again, because if it does, fucking Mike Williamson is out of a job. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I don't think uh, <laughs> that he's going to have that many... Mike Williamson's new role. Yeah, Mike yeah. Williamson's new role at Kawasaki that they made for him because okay. they were sad okay. for him. That another, already left. Another question: How many times does Kenny's rear spring fall out of the fucking shock? Why you got to bring that up? Well, I pray <laughs> for Kenny that that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> if that fucking back end kicks one more damn time, I swear to God, I'm coming through the TV. So, okay. So what about like? So so basically, what we're getting at here, though. Eli and Kenny are the dudes to be in the series. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Correct. They have been. They're the big dogs. I mean, how Kenny's pants say alpha dog. <laughs> I said it, I told you guys. Yeah, right. I told awesome. you guys last year that and I went and everybody knows how much of a student I am that Kenny at time or not Kenny, Eli at times last year was going faster than I ever seen somebody ride a supercross track. He was. And I've been and I've been watching Supercross Unreal. for twenty six years now. Yeah. I can't even see Stewart never even went that fast at sometimes. And everybody knows, even though Stu hit the deck on his good days, there was nobody that matched him in speed. Mm-hmm. Eli was going faster than I'd ever seen. He, that Salt Lake race where he came from dead last. Bro, he was going so he fast. He had over rev on a Cowie 450 on a Supercross I've track. I've never heard over rev on a Cowie 450 so Adam, hard. Adam Entiknap said this, and then it's funny so he just talked about Eli. So fast, bro. <laughs> but, so fast. No, I, I don't. Those guys are so leaps and bounds of ever, above everybody else, even not knowing what's going to go on with Kenny. Kenny's going to do awesome. That's what's going to go on. I think... That if you, I, I can't tell you how many wins they're going to get, but I will go as far as to say that I think that if you're going to talk about who's going to get wins on what coast, Eli's going to get wins on the West Coast, Kenny's going to get wins on the East Coast. Really? That's brave. Why? That's what did Eli brave. do in the ruts last year? What happened to East Rutherford? Well, you're not lying. 
And who and, and who's smoother out of the two? Mm-hmm. If it's yeah. gonna be wins, Eli's getting them on the West Coast and Kenny's getting them on the East Coast. Eli is not as good in ruts as Kenny is, plain and simple. But Eli is better at pushing the edge on the hard pack shit and letting his technique do the work. Which I don't even at that point you call it technique. He gets it like your boy R V and just drives it with the rear. <laughs> and my boy. So okay. So I don't think we need to elaborate anymore on those. We've pretty much gone. So no. well, you wanna do a bold prediction? Bold prediction? Would you let yeah, me no. fucking talk? I'm just, I'm just what? Fucking bearded piece of shit. God, bearded Damn piece it. of shit. I like that name. <laughs> you usually call him Moose Knuckle. But... <laughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> Title winner, 2018. Oh, man, you're not doing top three in points? Title winner, 2018. Dr. E. Title winner, Ken Robson. Zach Osborne's gonna win the 250 title. Other than that, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no. Sick. Oh uh, yeah. Anyway. Um. Anywho, no, I I'm with you, man. I think I think if Kenny doesn't get hurt, he he's gonna win it, man. I Kenny, dude. I like Eli, and Eli is fast, and I, I know because I watched it firsthand in Detroit. I watched it firsthand in Indy last year, but I also went to Anaheim one last year and watched Kenny. And if when Kenny Eli it, didn't have his changes, well, okay. Like. If Ken, yeah, but I, but, but, in in all reality, I've seen the two comparison what like not next to each other, but I've physically seen it in person both times. And as fast as Eli was going, he wasn't gonna touch Kenny all year. He wasn't. He wasn't. The only way he was going to beat him was like what happened in A two, where Kenny gets a bad start and is, has to come through the pack and is rushing and making more mistakes. But. Any night that Kenny was semi-feeling it and got a start, like he did in A1, like he did in, what was Phoenix round two, whatever. Yeah. He, dude, I'm, I'm telling you, man. Dude, I We watched Kenny in A1 win by 30 seconds, not even taking the fast line. It wasn't even going, going to the left field. Like, 3-2 was the fast line. He went 2-2-2 two, two, two all night. All night. And still won by 30 seconds. And didn't look like he... Like, he... Okay. When you watch Eli ride at times, you can see him pushing the ragged edge. Mm. You can see it visually. Mm. Kenny, you didn't see that. Kenny was just flowing. He was smooth. It was unreal. The confidence when, he had in that bike and himself was unreal. When he gets to that point where he starts looking like he's not smooth, he grenades. He grenades. But we all know, too, Kenny is Eli's kryptonite. Oh, yep, there it is. There what? it is. Man, I, I, got, I, got number, I got numbers. I really want to show Here's the that. thing. Here's the thing. But. We all know that in 2013, Eli beat Kenny for the 250 title. Since then, Kenny has had his number. But what happens when Kenny crashes? Well, usually does when Kenny crashes, it's that big. Wrist hold up? <laughs> oh, it's going to be fine. Does that wrist hold up? He's got a brace, man. He's got one of those braces that everybody wears, so I I don't know. No one knows. He's a huge question mark, but I can't doubt him until I see it not work. I'm I'm just going with my gut feeling, and I'm I'm stamping Tomac, man. I I think um, now that they got the bike set up and I'm, I think I'm gonna he's say, got that title, that monkey off his back. I think it's uh, I'm gonna say it doesn't it, it doesn't surprise me if Eli wins. If if he wins, it wouldn't shock me at all. I would not be like, oh my god, I can't believe Eli won. But I don't, I don't, I don't see it happening. I don't see. My personal thing is, I don't think um, necessarily Kenny was his kryptonite. I think winning is his kryptonite, and when <laughs> well, he can't win, no matter if it's Marv, Dunge, Kenny, that's when he makes his mistakes. Here's my thing, and, and I, I why I said Kenny first and Eli second. Why I don't think it's that big. It's going to be that big of a disparity, though. Okay. Eli last year, we all knew that he had to go out and win. He dug himself such a deep hole after the first three rounds. It was We all said it. Every, everybody talked about it. Probably in all group chats, mono chats. It was around the industry. Hey, just go out and fucking win. Keep winning. Keep winning. Hey, maybe you'll be there. And Had the East Rutherford mental block not happen, he was going to win that fucking championship. Plain and simple. If you go out and crash, well, you get fifth or sixth. Well, the title was never really yours to lose. Okay? It happened. Whatever. Fast forward outdoors. He had such a big gap on Baggett and Marv after Southwick that we will never really know when he started melt, melting down when Marv went on his win streak. Was it Eli managing a championship? And we even talked about it. We don't know if Eli can ride at half. We yeah. just don't know if he knows how to. Full bore is Eli's style. It's his technique. We don't know if he knows how to back it down because, hey, do I push in this corner deeper? Do I push in this fit? Do I check up here? Do I do this? Do I do that? 
We'll never know, Is was it a mental block creeping in that he could win his first 450 title, or was he really managing the championship? And I just don't know if when it's week in and week out where he has the weight of the red plate, where he either beats the guys that he's facing or he gets fifth, if he can hold up to it. Whereas Kenny, Kenny doesn't get pressure, let, let pressure get to him. And I will say it, Kenny has been straight up better than Eli, and I have no I went actually went back and looked at this numbers to prove it. If you take out the injuries, if you take out okay races that oh Kenny was leading or Eli was leading, they hit the deck and they had to pull off, or mechanicals, straight up, since they came to the class in 2014, which it'll be surprise you how many races they haven't lined up against each other. Eli's beaten Kenny 18 times, straight up. Now these are not just wins, these are outdoors, overalls, and supercross mains. Eli's beaten Kenny 18. Seems like a pretty good amount, right? Not even fucking close. Kenny's beaten Eli 37 times. 37 <laughs> times! I, had that, I mean, dude, that's a pretty, and pretty, I know pretty you good get, number. And I know, and and I know, I know that both of you guys like numbers, so that's why I threw that No, out. that's good. That's great. He yeah, beat them no, 37 to... times. These aren't just wins. They're just talking about, now, now, had you a factor in some of the other stuff, I think Eli would be up to like 25, but Kenny would be up to almost 48. Right, numbers well, don't they, lie. Numbers right, don't well, lie. Well, but I don't think it's that big of a disparity between them. I think that they're a lot closer, and I'll still go that I figure that if one of them's, that they're going to split wins if anything's going to happen. I think that they split wins. But I think when it comes down to it, if Kenny's behind Eli and they're going for a championship, I don't think Eli can handle Kenny's pressure because he knows that that's the guy that he's always going to have to live up to. Because Eli's got one championship, Kenny's got two, and Kenny beat RV his first fucking year. Eli wasn't even close to that. Oh, that's debatable, too. But... But, but I think I I'm actually opposite of you. I think um, if Eli gets out front, I think he's he's putting the hurting down. But I think if Roxon is out front and Kenny or um, Eli's behind him, that's when I think um, the the Kenny Kryptonite could happen. Okay, here's a question for you, and I I won't give my opinion. Just for for, you, for me for A1, Kenny speed at A1 compared to Eli at his best last year. Who's faster? Kenny speed A1. It's close, but I still think Kenny was okay. faster. Okay. I still do. Seen both in person, man. I think it ultimately comes down to this, and I think that it's something that if you're on one side or another, it's hard to be objective about it. But it all comes down to, in a late race situation, who do you trust more to not make the big mistake? Mm -hmm. And if you really want to look at it, if you really want to look at it, hold on. If you really want to look at it, they both have made big mistakes. That's why they haven't been Supercross champions. Oh, I agree. That's why they haven't been Supercross champions. But I'll go back to the fact of, and I think that when it comes down to that, it's not the kryptonite thing. I trust Kenny more because I think mentally Kenny's stronger than Eli. Does Kenny have nine wins total in Supercross? Uh, I don't know how many he has. You have to, that's something I didn't pay attention to. If you talk about from 14 to 17, more than likely. I don't know. I mean, we go back and forth about this all day <laughs> long. I think it's going to be a great season anyway. We slice it here. I'm excited for it. I know you guys are too. Oh, yeah. We've got what three weeks now until we start. Oh, that. who's that third? It? Yeah, three weeks. Who's third in the points? Ooh. Because I have one that'll shock you guys. Because it's not going to be Marv. No, mine either. I got Baggett. That's who I was going to say. Brock. Baggett gets. Brock I'll fucking what? Seriously, who gets third no, in the points? No, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Ando. I got by I got Baggett. Yeah, I would say Ando. one of those two. I'd be with you guys. On one of those so two. I don't know which one. But so wait a minute. I, so one. then what happens to Marv in your guys' opinion? I think Marv hits the deck at least one race. Uh, if not more, yeah. I really? Think, um, yep. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I've never thought that Marv was like, super strong throughout a whole no. season. Mm -hmm. Especially outdoors. Yep. So, Kenny, Eli, or Eli, Kenny, Ando, Kenny, Eli, and or Baggett, and then Kenny, Eli, Baggett. Okay. Yep. So, all right, cool. Anything else anybody wants to bring up before we, I mean, we've gone pretty long here anyway, so. I think there'll be one race this season where Kenny, Eli, and Marv aren't on the podium together. I would agree with that. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be sweet. I think it's one fucking race, because I don't think it'll ever happen again. All three of them are not. All, th all, so all three of them are off. So who's on the podium if they all three are off? Uh, Ando, Coop, and Baggett. Not in, in that, that order, order. Not in that, and not oh, in that order, but okay. it's going to yeah. be one of those three. It's going to yeah, be those three. I can argue that, so. All right, Benny Boss! Benny Boss! The, the giraffe. <laughs> the <laughs> monkey giraffe fucking thing. Okay. Those anyway. guys are going really fast in water. <laughs> <sighs> so anyway, uh, yeah, so this has been our uh, first episode for 2018 here. Anaheim won free race preview. Now, we don't do 250s because no one really knows who's racing what well, we until know the day of. We know one of these But guys. Nate fucking Zach Osborne. But anyway, um, thanks for tuning in. 
Uh, Matt will be with us sporadically throughout the year because you haven't committed to the whole season yet. So Matt will be with us sporadically. So one time. Yeah, so probably this one and that's it. Um, and other than that, yeah, thanks yeah. for tuning in. Uh, don't forget, follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, order t-shirts at the Teespring website that's linked down below. Uh, go to Patreon. Donate there. Help us out. We're trying to go to races. We're really trying, people. Be part of our RM Fantasy group. Yes, we are. RM Fantasy. I will create a group. I haven't done it yet. Um, I will do it probably this week or next week. We will have a Moto Aftermath Show Fantasy group. I will post on Facebook the actual link to it. So make sure you go to Facebook and follow us if you guys do want to be part of that group. And then that way you can get in and we can all play for fun. I'll see if I can get somebody to donate a prize. Or if not, I'll come up with a prize I'll for whoever both. wins. I'll beat you both. Shut the fuck up. You're yeah, not winning. Right. <laughs> you didn't beat me last year. I missed two rounds! You're always yelling. He's That's so loud. Saying. Fuck you guys. Anyway, um, but this has been another episode of the Moto Aftermath Show. We will see everybody after A1. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot. Well, the new 250 app is going to fail like this. The same turds that are fucking... Okay. The Honda 450 puts out the most horsepower next to the KTF. I just want to let you know, next time we do a show, don't wear black, man. Backdrop black, so you kind of fade into it. Well, why the fuck didn't you let a motherfucker know before? Oh, uh, my shirt, I feel like it. I didn't think about it. It's okay. <laughs> they can still see your fucking head really sticks out. Hey, look, like Tomac hit the ground. At some point. Hey, look, Tomac hit the ground. Oh, fuck, Mark. Oh, God. All right. Boobs. 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 Uh, another heel clicker. Is Quit he gonna... touching my dick. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, Get out of here. Jesus. <laughs> I just keep sitting down. Justin's <laughs> jumping. <laughs> fuck. Let me make sure I got this started, because, God, if I don't have this started for this section, I'm going to be pissed. Yeah, I know. This is the most important. Keep your fucking hands to yourself. Hey, hey. <laughs> At least.